Today's video is brought to you by Arium EEG, the best choice for continuous eyes on screen remote EEG monitoring from the best EEG specialists. Hello everyone, Gil Solano here and welcome back to yet another weekly neurodiagnostics discussion video where today we will be going over hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is a loss of brain function when a damaged liver doesn't remove toxins from the blood. This can affect anyone at any age who has liver disease and is usually triggered by a few things. Triggers for people with liver disease are alcohol use, sleeping pills, antidepressants, constipation, and dehydration, just to name a few. Treatment options vary depending on symptoms and overall health, but essentially you need to remove the toxins from the patient's blood. To do this, common treatments are ammonia reducers, antibiotics, and some laxatives. Also, if symptoms are mild, replenishing electrolytes may be all they need. There are five stages associated with mental and physical decline in hepatic encephalopathy. These are confusion to lethargy, semi-coma and stupor, coma, and deep coma with unresponsiveness. Other symptoms that can present themselves are slurred speech and a condition known as constructional apraxia, which is the inability to draw simple objects on a piece of paper. It's important to note that you can have the most confused and disoriented patients with hepatic encephalopathy and still may only show moderate EEG abnormalities. Speaking of EEG, in the beginning stages, it's common to see sudden shifts between a normal alpha frequency and slowing. This is then followed by triphasic waves. Triphasic waves are the most commonly identified trait and can be seen in both conscious and unconscious patients. Furthermore, massive EEG slowing with or without triphasic waves may be found in the absence of coma. And there you have it folks, that concludes our very short discussion on hepatic encephalopathy. If you would like to learn more, I'll provide sources down below where you can read up on it. And if you found value in this video, please consider sharing it with a student or colleague. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know what kind of videos you, my fellow neurodiagnostics professionals, are interested in. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.